Okay, so let's compare the rods, guys. We are gonna be running this motor at 6,000 RPM, that's the goal. This motor was originally designed for, you know, power pressure washers and things like that. We're using it for a completely different purpose in a vehicle, and vehicles should operate, could operate at much higher RPM. This is one of those safety components. Disclaimer, you need to run a better rod. This rod is just a, looks like a cast iron rod, okay, and it's just been fused together here. Uh, there's no way this can handle high RPM. It, this is a one piece CNC made from a single piece of aluminum. Billet it out, lightweight, strong. This is a much stronger rod. This is a standard length rod. You see that this has a much longer oil dip stick on it, but it's like the edge of a knife. There's no way that's splashing much. There's no way that will splash much, if it, any, oil. This, has an, this is much wider, probably twice as wide, but it has a little scoop in it, and that's gonna lubricate a lot better. If you're gonna run high RPMs, some rods you can buy, make them longer, a longer length rod, get a little bit higher compression ratio, but this is just a standard length rod, and that's all we're gonna use. This will add performance as well. Why? Because it's lighter. If it's lighter, that means less inertial forces. The engine has to spend energy just to keep itself running, okay? And the lighter your components means the less energy it has to do because the engine, remember, everything's running in opposite direction and moving up and down, in and out. Every time it has to reverse direction, every, you know, objects in motion have to stay in motion until act upon it by an outside force. Well, every time it has to turn back around, it has to use power to get itself running again and to keep itself running. This is lighter, it'll, it takes less energy to make it reverse direction and move in the opposite direction. In other words, less energy is going to be spent on keeping the engine running and more energy is going to be put toward the propeller. That's what you want. But if you want to know the exact part number, it's down there in the links. That's the deal I had with OMB Warehouse. So while we're removing the governor, I'm not sure I actually talked about this. Um, we're running high RPM. These original motors are just designed for, you know, 3600 RPM. We're going to be running like 6000. I don't know if I've said that in other places, but just to be specific, 6000 RPM means more horsepower, right? It means more horsepower means more power strokes per given unit of time. So, in other words, if you were running at 3000 RPM and you know, four stroke motor, that means one stroke is gonna be a power stroke. Everything else is gonna get reset to get another power stroke, right? Well, if you move to 6,000 RPM, you got twice as many power strokes in the same amount of time, right? So, it, and, and basically, just basic laws of mathematics, and I don't wanna to to get into all that, you end up with more horsepower and more torque. If you're gonna run high RPM, you have to remove the governor because the governor is designed to keep the motor at RPM, at 36, 3800 RPM. So you gotta take that out. Well, if you're gonna run higher RPMs, you're gonna have to replace vital components within the unit to withstand that high RPM. I Means you're gonna have to have a billeted flywheel and I recommend a billeted rod, something that can handle that extra force and pressure. The easiest way to do this, take a block of wood, okay? There's a gap right here. And that's gonna stop it from turning. You're gonna put your 19 millimeter uh, uh, socket here. And it doesn't take much energy at all. And I've already broken the bolt, but I always try to get a shot where I'm breaking the bolt because sometimes that can be hard. And then all you do is just take this loose as the neighbor is stopping right in front of the camera just to see what the hell I'm doing. This is the fan, which is, we're not gonna use this, this is a junk, okay? This is the gear that goes, this is where, you're gonna need this. You have to keep this, okay? This is what engages to start the motor when you pull it with the rope. So now we gotta pull this uh, flywheel off, thread this guy back on, Make sure that it's, there's still a gap. You don't want to be 
you don't want to be banging on the crankshaft itself. We're going to pull that bolt off. Now they do make uh, flywheel pullers and stuff like that, but I haven't bought one of those. Here's what scares me about this. I don't want to crack the engine, the, the crankcase. Maybe we can use our knee or something. Let's see. Yeah, things we go through. Nothing. Okay, guys. Um, removing that flywheel was the most miserable thing I've done in my life. That was miserable. I was banging. I was... You know, you know, I was, I was banging, I was prying, nothing, nothing. You know, I just couldn't get it off. So what did I do? I went to a shop at the head of the road here, had them remove it. They got it, dropped it off at work before I went to work one day. They got it off and, you know, very short period of time picked it up after I got off and that's it <laughs> so if you're having difficulty and you don't have a puller or you don't have an air hammer you know the air hammer that like a jackhammer and you don't have pry and you don't have help they can go just take it to an auto shop somewhere or somewhere that deals with small engines like this and they'll have a puller that can pull it off and you know cost me 20 bucks you know hey it's 20 bucks you think well it's 20 bucks I could spend on gas or oil or something for the motor but that's okay you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use that flywheel again, so what am I going to do? I just got it off, and I'll buy a puller for the current flywheel that will uh, work just fly fine. All right.